A long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, there was a series of games that sadly never made it to the store shelves. And a lot of them. Welcome to Mojo Plays, and today, we're looking at some cancelled Star Wars games. Before we begin, we publish new content all week long, so be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. We're going to be taking a look at a few games in the Star Wars universe that we would have loved to play. Believe it or not, this isn't the full list of cancelled titles. Kinda makes you wonder what kind of titles were never even announced that may have been ready to strike gold. Time to tilt things back in our favor. The escape pod? What are you doing? This guy's taking the express. Star Wars The Force Unleashed 3. The Force Unleashed series gave us strong action gameplay while letting players decide between the Jedi and the Sith. Now you can have your revenge and fulfill your destiny. After two solid entries in the franchise, LucasArts had actually started pursuing a third title. The team behind the game described it as a team-up between Starkiller and Darth Vader, which featured a co-op mode as well. This was also proposed as the finale to the Starkiller story arc and would have taken a more open-world approach to the series. Actors and developers had begun planning the game, but it faced delays due to The Force Awakens. With Disney's shutdown of LucasArts in 2013, The Force Unleashed 3 was scrapped along with our hopes for a satisfying ending to Starkiller. We're alive. Star Wars Ewok Adventure Despite a lot of bad blood towards the Ewoks, Parker Brothers toyed around with an entire Ewok video game. Larry Gelberg had designed the game for the Atari 2600 and had players fighting stormtroopers. Later levels would have you hijacking speeder bikes and ATSTs. Ewok Adventure was mostly based around glider combat, however, which is baffling considering their short appearance in Return of the Jedi. The game would also feature no music and was allegedly difficult to play. It was apparently this poor control scheme that caused Parker Brothers to ultimately end the development as a whole. The prototype has appeared online, however, with all its faults on display forever. Star Wars Imperial Commando Star Wars Republic Commando was the game that let you play as a group of clone commandos during the Clone Wars, but this sequel would have seen what would happen to them once the Republic became the Empire. Imperial Commando was set to follow a set of Imperial Stormtrooper commandos with the same classic FPS gameplay. Concept art and a loose story were actually created before Republic Commando was even released. In the end, it was allegedly the disappointing sales figures of the first game that forced Imperial Commando to halt its development. Nevertheless, the rumors and additional info from LucasArts books has had fans discussing a sequel to this day. Ready and rearing, sir. Door sliced and clear for entry, sir. Star Wars Episode 7, Shadows of the Sith. Actually, the droids are not for sale. Back in 2004, there was a concept floating around LucasArts to make a direct video game sequel to Return of the Jedi. I'm taking Captain Solo and his friends. You can either profit by this or be destroyed. The story was set to follow Luke's son Ben Skywalker as he fought against an evil Jason Solo. LucasArts creative director Hayden Blackman also stated that Shadows of the Sith would allow players to use brand new Force powers. The game also attempted the ambitious challenge of merging stories from the expanded universe with the movies. Though Shadows of the Sith struggled to get off the ground, ideas from the project were reportedly used in The Force Unleashed. Considering how many elements of the plot were also mirrored in The Force Awakens, LucasArts was clearly onto something with Shadows of the Sith. The droid. Where is it? Star Wars Dark Squadron and Star Wars Rogue Leaders Rogue Squadron Wii. Target in sight, ready to engage. After their strong Rogue Squadron series, developer Factor 5 worked on a Dark Squadron entry based around Empire pilots. Sadly, this alternate perspective was passed over in favor of an untitled Chewbacca bounty hunter game. 
The Chewie game was then allegedly rejected by George Lucas himself, which killed the idea for good. Factor 5 worked on a Rogue Squadron compilation for the Wii years later, which looked to add a co-op story mode to all three games in the trilogy. This compilation would also include a new speeder bike race mode, Wii Motion Plus lightsaber duels, and even Wii Balance Board controls. Despite Factor 5's history with Star Wars, the game was reportedly shelved due to legal issues. Visceral Star Wars, code name Ragtag. Our goal has always been not to just sort of make a game that is set in the Star Wars universe, but to really tell an authentic Star Wars story. In 2013, Visceral Games teamed up with Amy Hennig from the Uncharted series to make a narrative-focused Star Wars title. Ragtag's story was set to be an Ocean's Eleven-style heist with Uncharted-like action. The gameplay allowed you to control multiple smugglers in missions with firefights and stealth options. Space fights were reported to allow hijacking between ships, and the game would also take place in the aftermath of Alderaan's destruction. Despite a strong team, Visceral was shut down by EA in 2017, reportedly because the game was too linear and wasn't as monetizable as FIFA. The game was then handed over to EA Vancouver, where it would have a replayable focus. Hopefully, they would have better luck, right? And I just hope that every fan walks away going, wow, I never thought they were going to bring my Star Wars fantasy to life. EA Vancouver Star Wars, codenamed Orca. So it's a fantastic opportunity for Motive to really tell the world what we're about, and we're going to bring that to Battlefront. Well, shit. Though EA Vancouver had cannibalized codename Ragtag for this game, they reportedly started from scratch and used nothing but a few visuals and concepts. Players would still take control of a scoundrel or bounty hunter, but the set pieces had changed to open world planets. Right on time. EA had a large scope for this game too, but the proposed development time caused executives to worry with next-gen consoles on the horizon. Thus, Codename Orca was officially cancelled as of 2019 in favor of a smaller Star Wars game in time for 2020. Let's go. Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic 3 With the healthy fandom around both Knights of the Old Republic games, a third release had been set in motion. Old Republic 2 content designer John Stafford was already attached to the project too. The team had reportedly written story elements, quests, characters, and designed whole worlds to explore. Damn, another Dark Jedi! I'll try to hold him off! You get to the escape pods! Go! Some art for the game was later released in the Rogue Leader's book about LucasArts, which included a character named Narisha. Production was halted ahead of development due to rough times at LucasArts, and EA has allegedly turned down multiple pitches from Bioware to get it going again for reasons unspecified. While we still got the Old Republic MMO, there hasn't been any rumor towards a proper sequel. This fight is too much for us. We better stay back. All we do is get in the way. Star Wars 1313. While many Star Wars games have been relatively family friendly, 1313 wanted to tell a more mature story. Gameplay would have followed a young Boba Fett through level 1313, an underground city on the planet Coruscant. Down? Yeah, down. The rings aren't on Coruscant, they're underneath it. Though it was supposed to feature an M rating, this was allegedly to be for narrative purposes rather than outright violence. Fighting was also supposedly set around weapons and manual abilities rather than Jedi powers. After its well-received E3 trailer, however, Disney bought LucasArts and essentially froze the game. Current Lucasfilm head Kathleen Kennedy suggested in 2015 that 1313 could still return in some form, but there haven't been any actual announcements since then to get our hopes up. Nice strategy, by the way! Star Wars Battlefront 3 Well done. For the sequel to 2005's Battlefront 2, not to be confused with EA's Battlefront game, Free Radical Design wanted to allow players to swap between soldier and vehicle combat seamlessly. The game would presumably give fans more of the trooper-based gunplay, though little else was revealed about Battlefront 3. Free Radical Steve Ellis claimed the game was mostly finished, but then marketing costs ended the production. This prompted a lot of statements from LucasArts workers that Free Radical had missed deadlines and outright lied about the status of the game. Footage eventually leaked online, and there was briefly a playable download of Battlefront 3 on Reddit. 
As cool as it would have been to play, Battlefront 3 just faced too much internal turmoil to keep the franchise going. And we all know what happened with the Battlefront franchise next. Check out these other great clips from Mojo Plays, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos.